Welcome to the 611 Films Podcast. I'm your host, David Groves, here with my co-host. Neil McKay, what's happening, peoples? Um, this is where the magic happens, finally. Yeah, Lo- yeah this, <laughs> this is where this we're is gonna really going to get out. good. <laughs> we're going to get really into the weeds about micro-budget filmmaking and the fun and craziness that it that it is. It's, it's, it's going to be a wild episode. Uh, so stick with us. And this is the good, bad, and the ugly of micro-budget filmmaking. And so I'll turn it over to you because I know we didn't get into this. And, you know, you made a low-budget movie if you want to go into that. And we both ourselves, like you and I, made a low-budget movie back in Fairfax. I think, I think everything we've out. done, we've made several movies. And I think all of them have been. Yeah. Every, it's all low-budget. I mean. I'm not going to talk about my my few. days when I was directing superhero movies. <laughs> I've made quite a few uh, low budget uh, promos, low budget commercials, low budget. Uh, I guess teaser tra- even teaser trailers for movies I haven't even made or gotten funding for. I've done that. I've made. Yeah, uh, and for those you know, that, even that don't know, sometimes people do uh, what do you call them, like spec trailers, where it's like you spec you trailers, you, sizzle you reel, a, kind of thing. Yeah, you create yeah. like a two minute thing and you're basically like, okay, this is a movie, but you know, you're just you're only filming like a highlight reel of like what it could be, and then you get your funding or or And yeah, yeah. You that. hope you get your funding and all that stuff. And, and, on, and that is something I think is kind of cool and it was great. And if I had done it really well, maybe I, I try to do it like in two thousand ten for six shots. And this is a movie I'm still kind of writing and was going to be my baby for a while before I did Psychos, Psychos and Socios. So now it's six eleven films, and I guess if anybody doesn't know the, it's, so Dave, Dave and myself were roommates uh, about twelve years ago at a address in L.A. at six eleven, and so we just took the complex address and we're like, that's what. Well, you were like, that's what the film company would be, just as kind of like a shout out to the, you know. Yeah, to our, where, our we, history where we, we kind of had LA. the history because it, it's been yeah. so long since, you know, when he left and, and went back to Virginia and all that stuff. I was just like, well, mm. you know, we still had our boy, Ryan Mulkey, who has been in a lot of our projects. And, you know, he's even in Psychos and Socios. He's, and, he's on IMDb, too. Yeah, he's on Everybody's IMDb on IMDb. He, he's, he's done some cool shit. He's been in like he was in one of the biggest Sundance things aside from and this is a little aside. Uh, Sundance just did a higher pitch to an Andy Samberg movie. So basically, basically Birth of a Nation um, was the highest paid Sundance movie like three years ago for like $17 million. And then Andy Samberg's movie, I think, of, of, of the last week or so, or yeah, or a couple weeks. I mean, I, so I hadn't, I hadn't heard about this. Is this something that he's like directing or starring in or? I don't know if he like had a cameo, but he was a producer or exec producer. I don't know much about it, but it was some. It was something kind of ridiculous where they did that thing of like, all right, the 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 highest paid movie to get a distribution deal was Birth of a Nation a few years ago. So here is seventeen million dollars and one, or something like that. And oh, maybe man. and so- maybe that's like not true, or maybe that's like just kind of like. I'm not saying it's fake news or anything, but I I don't so know. I'm, I, I'm just gonna say so. So like so so Birth of a Nation. Now I can attest that that was truly. Now it had a much bigger budget than than like Dave and me's film respective films had. But I mean, it truly was. Uh, I would say an, an independent movie. I mean, it didn't have, you know, a list uh, Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, um, for those that don't know, I mean, it was a it was a birth, uh, it was a slave revulsion movie about uh, Nat Park uh, Nat Turner. And yeah, uh, it had Army Hammer as probably a bigger lead than obviously Nate Parker, and, and then some lesser roles filled in with TV actors. And, and yeah, it had, Ryan um, was, was in it. Oh, what was his and name? Jackie Earl Haley in it as well. Yeah, Jackie Earl Haley. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, it's not like you know, it it had it wasn't some stuff. a small movie by any means, but it was still independently done. No, no it, studio, no studio, no production company put money into this movie it was nate parker right and that basically finding massive uh, would you would you say the budget was on that like half a million i, I, think, I think i i know it was about eight million. Eight oh, or nine oh okay million. never mind i was grossly grossly inaccurate um 
All right, so maybe that's like a little bit. Okay, so this is the point I was going to make. And then maybe, maybe that's, I don't know, you know, split hairs on this or whatever. But at least with like an Andy Samberg thing. And I'm, and I'm I, I just always been kind of annoyed with these movies that come into film festivals and it's like, and then they win these awards or they get distribution and stuff. Andy Samberg does not need to go to uh, Sundance or Cannes to get distribution. I mean, like seriously. I mean, no, nah, right, right. So well, it's like, I mean, and I, I just, and I don't care if he was just, oh, he was an exec producer or something and he had nothing to do with it. And it was some, you know, movie about a kid growing up in rural Idaho or who, who knows what. I don't know. But it's like that's not like when you have uh, – I don't know. I guess that's just my thing. It's just like this, that's not an independent movie. That, well, hey, man, I, and I think this is good fodder. Even talking about micro-budget, low-budget movies too, like you've been in Austin for a few years. And last year, I guess, or a year before that, you were – you were placed as like one of those screeners for, you know, the Austin Film Festival. For, I, for I was, sure. right. I was, um, I was, yeah. No, I don't no, know how much you can say or not say, or like if they had you sign an NDA or I don't know what that is, but you kind of um, know the politics. I, 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 you, I can't say, I don't think I can talk about, um, I don't know at this point now that it's done. Cause they, this was for, this was last summer I was doing this. So this was, so all the movies that, uh, I mean, and, and, and Austin Film Festival is in October. So it's not like I can, you know, if I talked about a movie that didn't get in or did get in or, I mean, it doesn't matter. You know, it's like, I can't affect yeah, but the, the, ju- but the judging politics or was it, it? No, let me, let me rephrase that. It's not about the politics of like you get in or like a big star gets in. There's just a quintessential idea of what the festival wants to be. And if your movie doesn't really fit that thing, that's yes. where it goes. That's hey, that's the right? thing that I think. Yes, like a lot of people. And yes, this is this is good info. To know. So so the Austin Film Festival was a very, was a um, they had their thing, and they were like, we are very story driven. So we don't care about genre films or effects or uh, this or that or the other. They're just like uh, it's all about like story. And they had, and even you could go a little bit further than that because it's like, well, what does that mean? Like, have a good you know good narrative. Like, well, what the hell. Um, I think they were looking for more, um, I don't know. I think they would probably go more for like a mumblecore kind of movie or something like offbeat and just dialogue heavy or something as opposed to like, oh, it was a very well-rounded story. Oh, I that was a really kind of, cool thriller, but. Uh, but it's not, yeah, they, were, actors, the they were, they were kind of a, a place for the, for the, you know, you're kind of. I don't. I don't even know what like the genre would be, but those kind of those talky movies or those like, um, you know, it's it's just like a slice of life or just kind of off the yeah. beaten path kind of things. Well, um, like Mark Duplass or like, right, right. That's uh, why I was kind of saying like that mumblecore kind of style, Joe like Swanberg, that, like, Joe Swanberg or a Terrence mm-hmm. Malick kind of idea. Like, oh, it's just about life. It's just yeah. Richard, Richard Linklater, obviously. I mean, that's sort of like a gimme. So that's, so that's what they there. were. Like, <laughs> So now, so now, like I would not submit. So I, so the my, the movie that I did, uh, trip the horror movie, I wouldn't submit it to AFF because they also film festival because I don't think it would get in because it's not what they're looking for. Now I, I'm not, I don't know if it would get in a fantastic fest, but that is the kind of film festival, at, at least local to Austin, that would would be more in the, in the style of yeah, you know in the range of, of, of now and and South by Southwest is the big one out here. I think that's a little too big. That's like getting up there, you know, like with Tribeca and like on that level. So that yeah. might be too big for a little movie like, like mine, but um, something like fantastic. So, so, but my point is, is like, you got to know if you have, you know, a Western uh, or a period piece or something, you're not going to obviously submit it to like a, a horror movie film festival, you know? So it's just the same with anything else. But yeah, know what you're But they see in. like that big, but, but filmmakers don't really, that's cool, but they don't get that really. And I don't know if we even got that. We just kept going like, Oh, no. we'll, we'll send it to Ashland. We'll send it to DC film fest. We'll send it to Maryland film. Fest. We'll send it here. We'll send we, it We there. just sent it to, we were like, Oh, that, that looks cool. Let's and send this it. Our, to our, our our and it's like, Eleven, that was like an ensemble kind of comedy dramedy with a little thriller at the very end. And it, yeah, it did. It didn't get into any film festivals it because was, I don't think we knew what we were, what we had, or like, or where to put it. We well, it was um, well the lesson that you that you and I learned, I think, which you know, it's the same thing with with the film festivals. Know what you're submitting to. Know what your movie is. I think we were, we. I mean, I, I still look back and I think it was a cool story, and 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 I, I've 
you know, proud of like what we did with it. But how the hell do you market something like that? How do you even like pitch it to somebody or describe like what's your movie about? And then it's like, oh, it's this and this. And it's like, Jesus Christ, man. Like, yeah, we, what is, we, well, I think we basically said like, ooh, it's kind of like a Tarantino meets uh, Fincher meets Paul Thomas Anderson. But a lot of Paul Thomas, like it's an ensemble thing and it's crazy. It's an, um, it's like, yeah. Yeah, but it's not Paul, but that's not what it is. Like you just made a $50,000 movie with a lot of people that nobody cares about. Nobody knows. Not that we don't care about them, but nobody cares about these people because they're a bunch of no names and they don't care about you. Like when you, but did it's also, Bert, it's how do you unite PTA and you had Burt Reynolds and Mark Wahlberg and Julian. Yeah, and right. And so, these people and but, that's what you care. But you could kind of, I mean, I think you, you could kind of describe Boogie Nights and someone would be like, oh, I get it, you know, and, and you could say it in a sentence or, or less. I have no idea how you would describe Eleven in a sentence or, or, or less because it's like, well, you have a documentary about the worst movie ever made and then all the people involved in that in that worst movie ever made and their lives intersecting. It's like, huh? And then it's like, it's a dramedy with the thriller element. It's like what you said. It's like, yeah. what, the, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think like what's funny too is like, I think that that movie works and I think 11 works in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. And we, we, we had some issues with, everything in that movie for sure but we're still both proud of it what would so you I'm say not, okay. not it doesn't not work i'm just saying like uh, there's a lot of other movies too that i don't think really work like that tried to be the next pulp fiction that tried to be the next tarantino thing right like they were uh, everybody wanted to be that next like doug Liman or like go wanted to be yeah i i don't think i don't know three stories where you know, they all knew each other in the market and then one went to, I don't, Vegas. I don't know. I don't think we, we did that though. I, I definitely think there was a lot of PTA influence on the movie, but I don't think we were trying to be the next PTA. I think we were doing our own. I think you, you and I think you would agree with that, that, that when we did that, oh, when no, we, we did still 11, try to be our own thing. We, we, we it was like, this is going to be yeah. our boogie nights, but we wanted to have our own thing. And, and uh, yeah, sure. We had two characters and they were on a collision course to kind of death, but they were going to try to make this happen or, 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 or kind of undo the wrongs that, that happened to them earlier. That's mm -hmm. how I saw it, you know, but it, it didn't really go through. And, and that's not a, that's not the bad thing. I think we learned a lot with that micro budget movie. And so what, and, and so you said that was the bad thing. What, I guess here, here, uh, what would you say? We're talking about good, bad and the ugly. How, what would you say from that movie would be, Give the me an ugly example of the good, the bad, and the ugly. We didn't, we didn't. Okay. The bad thing was we didn't know how to market it. We just loved the idea of it. So the good thing was the bad thing. We just loved the idea of we're going to kind of do this weird. We're going to do this bigger movie. We're not going to make a. We're not going to fucking do like this. It's all in a house and, you know, somebody's going to go kill a lot of people till the final girl shows up. And, you know, she was the nerdy high school. Uh, no, no, no. Let's just do something like Tarantino or Paul Thomas Anderson would do or like, and we're both I, I, at the time, you know, I'm 24, 25, you're 27, 28. And I was like, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just do something big. Like people couldn't ignore us because we're going to do it for like less than they've mm -hmm. ever done it before. And so that was our idea. Like maybe not in the context of like that mm -hmm. in that, let's just talk, but that those are the influences. Those are the ideas that we kept talking about. We love Tarantino. We love PTA. We love Fincher. We love David Lynch. How can we do weird shit, but at the same time, also make a movie that could stand out from the crowd of like, no indie movies ever done this for 50 grand or 40 grand or 60 grand, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, what the budget was like, holy crap. You guys had an ensemble cast. You were all over the place. And that's also kind of the bad. We didn't really, I mean, I don't know. I think we did do that thing of writing where it was sort of like, we'll figure it out too. It's yeah. It's just funny. That is my, and you wrote it. it's the, the, the good is the bad and the bad is the good. The good yeah. is the bad. Yeah, exactly. And that's <laughs> the thing about the micro budget movie is sort of, but, but for that, for 11, again, 
I was loving everything. Every time we we went to a bar, everyone you came to my place. I went to your place. Our DP our DP came over and started talking. Like we had all these writing sessions. Oh, let's do this, or maybe we can it do was. This. Um, yeah, it was. It was. I, I mean, looking back, it was pretty impressive of all how many actors we had because it was an ensemble piece and how many locations. It, it it was pretty incredible for such a low budget movie. I mean. You know, I mean, there's a handful of locations we had repeat scenes in, but it felt like every scene was a new location. Yes, yeah, yeah, right. For sure. um, and I'd say, yeah, and I'd say that was I, I can I can see where you're coming from on on that's kind of a good and a bad. Um, and when you were going into like the sessions that we had, I think that was kind of some of my fondest kind of looking back and the and the fun of making movies was that because so so you know you were just saying like there's about two characters that are kind of on a collision course and so they have sort of parallel lives or they're trying to fix things from their past so um right. and the number 11 was kind of a a, a rep- repetitive thing like significant things happened with that number either it was somebody's age or that was they we kind of did it like a chap like chapters of a book and we had 11 chapters and, and these things but we we kind of like this idea of, of of if you just write a slash and a slash parallel to each other. That's the number 11. So it's just kind of these parallel lines. So we did all these kinds of artsy things where we would incorporate parallel bars in the background where it's like somebody standing in front of an elevator or, you know, in all these things. And then, and then we, the whole story was kind of showing how the same things were happening to our two protagonist characters who were trying to kind of fix things in their past. And, you know, they're on this collision course and, you know, it's just like a different context, but the same things were happening or, you know, the repetitive dialogue or just, just everything was kind of bookended or mirrored. Um, it was just fun to kind of do that. Um, so I guess that would be, I guess, I guess the good, but, and then you mentioned like the writing of it. Um, I look back at like one of the bad, maybe it's the ugly, I don't know, but the beginning was just too convoluted. That's kind of one of my regrets. I think I don't have that many regrets, but it's, that would be the one is yeah. we just, we tried to do this big bombastic stylized crazy opening of like all this shit going on. And, and then it's just like, it was just confusing. And it was like, we don't need all that. Just get right to the story. Just move, just go into it, you know? And I yeah, again, yeah. and that's our, our, our naivete of like, yeah, but if PTA can do this on like, you know, $60 million, what if we did it for 50 grand? Or something, you know, like, hey, mm, yeah, and then kind of crazy thing. <laughs> we're gonna show him up, like, uh, look, who yeah, it didn't, didn't really work that way, but no, um, no, it didn't, no, it didn't but, work uh, that way at all. But, but, um, but no, in, in retrospect, though, I think that you, um, you can never be afraid, though, to take a chance because if you play it safe, I mean, you're just kind of, you know, I mean, you're never gonna, I mean, I don't think anybody that's ever made it or, or done, you know, some some great cinema has ever, you know, done it by playing it safe. I mean, I think you got to take risks, you got to take chances. And I definitely think 11 was, was a risk for us. And, um, and I mean, but it, it was a hell of an experience. And I mean, to this day I go, man, that was, that was pretty cool. What we were able to do for, for, for peanuts, you know? Yeah. And again, guys, this is like, uh, you got to listen to the backstory uh, episode that our very first episode, obviously, because, you know, Neil and I knew each other after the the right time and tiny crevice, like our two short films and all that stuff. And then we just jumped right into screening those like two short films. And then, hey, let's just make a feature. We should just. OK, yeah. And that bravado, that kind of like. Uh, yeah all right let's just do it yeah fun mid-20s let's do it let's make a movie great and i and i still to this day yes nobody made a dime on that film i've lost i lost a ton of money on that film i put a lot in and nothing but at the same time i learned a ton about filmmaking very 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 true again we didn't have like we're not at um, – so yeah, when you think about it, like, oh, you know, NYU, USC, UCLA, blah, blah, blah. You're going to spend maybe set, at this point, at this day and age, 2020, 100 grand, 150 grand if you're out of state or something like that. We made a movie for like 35, 40K, but we learned a ton off that thing. And I and feel – um, 
with other projects when we came to LA and, you know, budgeting and camera work and how to do things. It, it, it was an invaluable experience just to jump in and do yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, I mean we, we talked about this before that there is definitely, you know, advantages to getting the theories and, and the education and, and, you know, just kind of the, to the, the, the in the classroom kind of stuff. But I'm a firm believer that you really, your, your real film school education is just being on set and doing it. Um, Cause you, oh, yeah. you, you, they're not going to teach you etiquette and slang and, and all these things, you know, how to deal with people in the classroom, you know, how to deal with personalities, um, you know, how to, you know, juggle with the, you know, camera department wants this, the actors want that, you know, I mean, that's real world stuff, man, that you got to go out and, and learn and do on your own. And not like I'm some expert at it, but you know, I mean, like, we, like David said, we were still learning on, on sets, but, um, that's the thing you got to go. I mean, we, we have a funny story where we were working on a project and these guys were, uh, you know, they thought their, their shit didn't stink. And they were these NYU film students. And, you know, they were talking about mise-en-scene. I'm like, am I saying that right? Is it mise-en-scene? Mise-en-scene. Mise-en-scene. Yes. I always yeah. screw that up for whatever reason. After 20 years, I can never say that damn word. Right. Um, anyway, they're or talking about all these. Machina. Deus Ex Machina. Yeah. <laughs> So they're talking yeah. about all this da 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 da, you know. Yeah, the, we were working. Yeah, we were working with the, you know, one of one of the people we had worked with before, and they were like, and he was like, basically saying, "Come down to this little pizza shop. I, I got to shoot this scene for my other thing." And we were like, "Oh yeah, you helped us out for our movies. We'll help mm. you out." And we were just there to kind of help out. Like, I'll bring my camera and blah blah. But these guys were gonna like kind of do everything, and and that was the funny thing is like, then we did everything. I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they they talk this big game and everything, and it's like, okay, well, you know, you're running the show, you guys are directing, producing, you know, all this other stuff. But, you know, Dave and myself are just there, kind of basically like as as like swing grips. They're just like, all right, what, what do you if you yeah. tell us what you need help with, and and we'll do it. And we were all kind of, and we were also like, you know, if we needed to be in the in the scene or, or this that or whatever. Um, and then and then they're setting up the the camera, and they're like, you know, they're just looking all confused, and like Dave just walks over, he's like, the on switch is right here. <laughs> The thing and it's just like and it's just kind of made me shake my head because it's like for all the you know gusto or or all the the blubber they're they're spitting you know it's, it's the nyu and, that, and, and, that, and at that time it was sort of like also weird too because it was like kind of that digital revolution it's the digital revolution like it's not about film cameras anymore guys it's not about like 60 millimeter and having to cut and process film and this or that it's a it's a video camera to, to be honest, like it, it's almost like your dad's handy cam or high eight camera. It's almost as easy as that. And they they didn't know. Like, wait, where? Uh, uh, no, it's right there. You, you never use this camera like it's been around for two years. I think it was like the Panasonic DVX that I brought with us. And again, that had yeah, been like I mean, uh, it, around for like two, two and a half, three years or something at that point. Yeah. Like, it's it's, it's just. It's it's a it's a simple story to tell, but I mean, there's just a big difference between you know, okay, you, you know, you you see all of these lighting techniques in a classroom, and then you watch all these movies, and you're like, okay, we're gonna put the camera like this, and it's it's quite another thing to go out there and be a director of photography. You can't just, oh yeah, yeah. well, I watched it in a movie. I'm just gonna do that. You know, it's like, oh, it's yeah, like, I don't, I, and I don't know how that even, I don't know how that ended or how that we left that kind of idea because it was my camera or was like we were just trying to help out a buddy to get these guys like kind of going with their stuff because he had helped us out and all this other shit. But it was just yeah, like, and I, I mean, it, I, you know, I don't know whatever happened with that, whatever the project we was, and I'm I'm not trying to like you know make no, I, 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 rag I, I, on these yeah. people. I'm just trying to make the the comment that it or the, oh, the no, point that. I'm, I'm um, trying to do you, the same thing. You, you need a well-rounded, um, you know, you need everything. You need, you do need the classroom stuff, but you need the on-set stuff too. I mean, and, and it, oh yeah, for sure. You know, and um, and I think, and then you and I just kind of, I think we, I don't want to say take this for granted, but we, 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 you and I both have this personality where we're like a sponge and we want to, you know, have all our hands in the cookie jar and understand like all the process of things. Some people just want, I just, they want their one job and that's all they want to do. And, and I, and I sometimes I have to take a step back and be like, oh yeah, because I just find it interesting. Like I want to know what everybody's doing. Not like I want to micromanage everything, but it just, I, it just helps me understand, you know, what makeup and wardrobe is doing and what the actor's journey is like and, and the writing process and, and all of these different things and how they all come together. Cause if I'm just tunnel vision, yeah. I'm only worried 
about one thing, that's not going to help every, you know, it's not going to help me, you know? No, and, and no. And, and you need to know every department to some degree. I mean, in any movie situation, like I, I don't care if you're just doing your own indie movie and it's you and three other people and you all are wearing every single hat. You still figure out what what's the hat that they're still going to do if you're a director, if you're a writer, if you're an editor, if you're a producer, if you're a DP. Like you got to kind of know all of it these days. I think that's the thing about indie maybe like the micro budget world right now. And I think people are starting to get it. People didn't really get it like a couple of years ago where this world is no longer going to be suited to the 70s and 80s or even the 60s, <clears throat> even even the early 90s. Like, hey, just be a writer and director. Just just do that. No, no, no. No, you need to know producing. You need to know editing. You should know a little bit about production design, a little bit about lighting, a little bit about lenses and camera and how all this works. You have to know it, all it, of it. It helps too, just because you can see. Because I'm starting to see, you know, now that I'm kind of finishing up um, post production on um, on trip, certain things are like, oh, now I get it. You know, like things that were put in place by production design, and now like I'm doing color, I'm doing color correction with my DP right now, and I'm seeing, holy shit, that's gonna look cool if we do this because, yeah, you, know, you have like the the certain colors in the wardrobe and the background and. And I'm like, oh, man, that would work for that. You know, and it's like, I guess in kind of retrospect, I kind of wish I saw, you know, we're moving, we're moving so fast. So it's like I couldn't really see the forest for the trees a little bit. But just seeing, oh, now I see how it's all kind of coming together, like the color palettes and things like that. And it's just cool, you know, or just sitting in with uh, my composer and hearing what he's got and then just asking, well, what's that sound? What about this? What if this was more like this? It's just really cool. And it's like, yeah. some people could just right. be like, yeah, whatever you do your thing. I don't care. But to be involved in it and kind of, on, you know, Oh wow. Th this intersects with this and this enhances this. Yeah. So I think that for the most part, um, a lot of indie filmmakers, they can't just be, you know, that one thing, like it's not the nineties anymore. You know, it's not the eighties or even the seventies or six. like, I'm just a director. I'm just the producer. I'm just the writer. A lot of indie filmmakers these days are going to have to wear a lot of hats and that's probably writing and directing more than likely. Hell, a lot of them are also going to be editing their own movies. So I think that's, that's where it's really going to start is, is knowing a lot of the roles and you can't know everything and it and it'd be really really hard to know everything about everything in the filmmaking world but for indie filmmakers now you really have to know a lot about the producing and i think on, on like probably in another episode we'll talk about the producing or how to start with that whether you're a writer or a director or anything getting into the producing world i think is crucial yeah, and I mean, there's always the question of, you know, where you're making a movie and this this daunting ca task and how, where do you even start? And um, I think, you know, that's a whole other, <laughs> that'd be a whole other episode, I guess. But um, just, you know, when you're, when you, if you if you get into the role of producer, that does help you with kind of, oh, okay, I need to do this and this is how much it's going to be and this is what I need to do and start here and all that kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that would be a great first. Um, that would be like the second portion of the micro budget film world. Really get into those nuts and bolts as far as, okay, how do how do we even start and and where do we go from there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right, that sounds good for this podcast, guys. Thanks so much for listening, and uh, yeah, we'll see you again. See you in the next one for the Six Eleven Films Podcast. I am Neil McKay. And I'm David Grove.